we have one more speaker joining us remotely, live in this case. It will be Evgenia Gupkina. She's an architect and uh, an architectural historian from Kharkiv, Ukraine. She's actually joining us from Paris now for reasons that, that we all know about. Um, she will talk about socialism. Her work specializes in architecture and urban planning of the 20th century in Ukraine. She takes a multidisciplinary approach to heritage studies. And in uh, 2020, 21, she curated the Encyclopedia of Ukrainian Architecture, a multimedia online project that worked with architecture, history, criticism, cinema, and visual arts. And she's here, and I hope we can hear her. Evgenia? Yes, I'm here. Do you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much for having me and giving me a voice. So my letter will be S, socialism. A dream of a just society for sure is the most beautiful and the most rational and maybe the most difficult to achieve. But its complexity doesn't ne negate the need to achieve it, which the world society stubbornly demonstrates from epoch to epoch, from century to century. Architecture as perhaps the most social type of activity, reflects the development of understanding and models of justice, expressed in shapes, volumes, and space, where a human being is a center and society is a customer. Behind architecture, there are just social functions of buildings and spaces, as well as socially oriented ideas of a fair, equal, inclusive society. Sometimes there are some socialist states who stand behind such ideas, but always society itself stands behind architecture, as the built environment often becomes a form of a public relations. Being a native of the former Soviet Union, for many years I have promoted the idea of separation between socialism and what only pretends to be socialism. Not actually everything that was called socialism in the Soviet Union was socialism in fact. And many great ideas were very different from the implementation, sometimes up to the opposite. Soviet architecture operates with leftist theories, going through a number of stages of in, in formulating the concept of socialist architecture. The main goal uh, which was not always so directly called, was achieving equality and justice. This was based on collective ownership of all means of production, resources, land, building, and enterprises, as well as an absence of private property, which implied equal distribution of benefits, equal access to resources, and creation of equal living and working conditions. Various norms and standards, as well as decision-making procedures, became regulators that provided. A quite logically sorted out idea acquired a number of features in the reality of the Soviet context. These features led to the fact that often a good and human idea was shaped in an inhuman way and worked not in public interest, but sometimes even against them. Vagueness of Marx's ways of common to socialism made it possible for totalitarian regimes to interpret them as they like. Thus, what should have been achieved by democratic procedures was achieved by suppressive and violent ones. And society had no access to decision-making process. It ultimately distorted the destination point uh, where this path should lead to. That is why Soviet socialism sometimes was not quite socialism. The appropriation by the Soviet Union of interpretation of the term socialism led to the misunderstanding or lost in translation that still exists uh, in uh, uh, that still exists today about what socialist architecture is. Not all Soviet architecture was modernist, and not all architecture resembling modernism in form can be socialist modernism, because the main dividing line between leftist architecture and that which opposes it was the question, ethics or aesthetics. Leftist modernism choose aesthetics, uh, choose ethics, I'm sorry. So how is it going with ethics today? 
and I would share a screen. You can see one of the most uh, biggest uh, residential areas in Soviet Union. That is the uh, dwelling district that called Saltovka in Kharkiv. Uh, 500,000 people lived in Saltovka. Anyway, socialist uh, architecture, first of all, deals with housing, and it is mass housing. Micro districts of mass housing in Ukraine are inhabited today by hundreds of thousands of people. No matter how largely aesthetics characteristics of panel prefabricated architecture were criticized, it has accommodated the lives of so many people and serves their interest. With the beginning of the full-scale war in Ukraine, in February 2022, exactly social infrastructure objects were under attack by the Russian army, not military infrastructure. Hospitals, kindergartens, schools, shopping malls and markets, transport infra infrastructure, parks, and first of all, residential areas became target for Russian missiles, bombs, and shelling. Hundreds of people have died right in their apartments in panel prefabricated residential buildings. That what Russia has done in Ukraine is act of terrorism. It is a behavior of a terrorist state because the main target for Russia is the people of Ukraine. And as a true terrorist, Russia is aimed at killing as many civilians as possible. Architecture is not just walls. Architecture is people. Another term that begins with the letter S and has always been associated with socialism is solidarity. We Ukrainians, Ukrainian architects, historians, urban planners, the community of researchers of the architecture of the 20th century, modernism lovers, promoters, and defenders are asking of international colleagues for solidarity. If you share the ethical values of modernism, you cannot support the narrow imperialist state of Russia. Be ethical, not aesthetical. You cannot support terrorism being a Democrat. You cannot support imperialism being leftist. You cannot support destruction of heritage being modernist, enthusiastic. You cannot support people's death being human. Solidarity to Ukraine and no solidarity with Russia. Support Ukraine. Stop supporting Russia. Thank you.